Wow, I was not expecting to make this video today. Clearly, because no makeup, my hair looks like that. Let's put on some lip balm. <sighs> yeah, I was debating if I should film this now or later after I've kind of like thought about it or had more time to like get ready for the video physically and also just mentally and also just like preparing what I wanted to say. But also I feel like I should just share it when it's fresh on my mind because that is the essence of this video is like the rawness of it, I guess. But really, I wasn't expecting to talk about this so soon on my channel. I always knew that I would talk about it, but I thought I'd be like way down the line after I had more subscribers and after I felt like people would even care or that I could like help somebody or something. But today is leap day and it's a significant day and it's making me feel some type of way. So four years ago, someone really important to me passed away. She was sick, but it wasn't enough that I thought she would pass away like randomly like this like it felt very random I remember waking up to a text that she had passed away and I was really shocked um yeah I, I thought we had more time to I don't know whatever but I haven't really thought about it every year <clears throat> I know it's stupid but like the day that it is aka February 29th I don't know it's like making me feel like it's more real or it feels more like a real anniversary of her passing away because it's like the actual day, which is kind of silly. I feel like obviously it's been four years, but yeah, I don't know. But anyways, yeah, it's so weird. I have not thought about it every year until today. But the thing that I want to talk about is not necessarily her passing away. It's just this day was the first day of so many things that changed my life in so many ways four years ago. So during this time four years ago, I was in a really hard marriage we were on the brink of divorce but had not made that decision that's probably a video that i'll make in the future about like what happened there i don't know i still have to think about like what i would want to share in that video just to be wise and stuff like that and i don't know just putting it out into the public it would affect other people so yeah that's a different video but basically we were deciding what to do and for some reason <clears throat> her passing away kind of jump-started all these decisions so anyway i was in a really hard marriage and it was just a really hard time. I was really getting through each day. Yeah, there was just like a lot of things I was doing just to survive. I was also living really far from home, so that was hard, but also it was okay because I had friends out there and yeah, luckily I had a lot of people around me. There were very, very, very few people that knew exactly what was going on, but it didn't matter because even if my friends didn't know exactly what was going on, there was just like a lot of stuff. I still felt very supported by my friends because they knew something was going on and I've always had really amazing friends. So I was really thankful for that. But yeah, so I was about to turn 30. I remember thinking that I was about to enter my 30s and that I was about to just like not be married anymore. That was where we were headed. And I remember thinking that my life was over. Like nobody would want to marry me again. I wasn't going to have kids. Like I was going to be this like really shameful person that people would look down on because I was divorced. I literally didn't know a single person in my age or community that was divorced. I come from a very conservative Korean Christian background. I don't think we've ever, ever talked about divorce. I just remember thinking like, oh my gosh, like this is so bad and my life is over. But at a certain point, I remember telling myself that it doesn't have to be over. Like you know what, I'm about to turn 30 and this is a horrible situation, but I'm going to make the best of it and I'm going to throw myself a freaking party. <laughs> so that's what I did. I gathered a bunch of my girlfriends and I told them I am throwing myself a party for my 30th birthday and you're all invited and it's going to be a freaking good time. And so that's why I flew back and we went to one of my favorite restaurants called 90 Miles in Chicago and I think there were maybe like 12 people there, I don't remember, but... Um, a bunch of girls came out and it was so lovely. I don't know why I'm crying. <laughs> I don't think I've cried about this in so long. I'm like desensitized to it because I've told this story so many times. But I'm telling you, like, something about today is making me feel some type of way. I don't know. Anyways. <clears throat> so then, yeah, I had this party and it was amazing and it was lovely. And then the next morning is when I found out that she passed away. So then my friend and I drove down to where the wake was going to be. <sighs> and then my husband at the time flew in from where we were living and we attended the wake and the funeral and all that. And yeah, 
it was just so crazy. It was so crazy. Long story short, this was obviously February 29th and we had stayed in town for a few extra days. And by the time that it got to be my birthday, which was a few days later, that was the day that we literally decided, okay, when we fly back, we are going to not be together anymore. And we're going to start making moves on this divorce. So my 30th birthday is truly like, I can't not think about all of this on my birthday because that's literally when everything happened. We had been going through a lot of stuff for actually a few years up until this point, but my birthday is the day that I distinctly remember that a final, final decision was made. And so, yeah, um, we flew back, I think on my birthday. So at midnight on my birthday, we decided, you know, we're not going to be together anymore. That was March. And then by April, I had moved back home to Chicago. It was so crazy because as soon as we went back, COVID hit. I remember my friend Tina flew in for a trip that we had planned earlier and she literally flew in, I don't know, let's say it was like March 9th or something, and then flew back home on like March 11th or something, and then it locked down like March 12th. It was like, I'm sure those dates are not accurate, but it was kind of like that. Like she came in, we drove down to Savannah, had a great time, and then she flew back and then it was locked down. Like we were like, oh my gosh, are you going to be able to get home or is everything going to shut down and you're not going to be able to fly back? In retrospect, maybe she shouldn't have come, but it was already planned and we didn't know how bad COVID was going to be. So basically my ex and I were stuck in the house and trying to pack up all of our things and I was shipping things like every day, you know, to bring it back to Chicago, to my parents' house, getting ready to move out and all this stuff. And so it was just so crazy. There was a lot going on. But anyways, I don't even know if that all made sense. I don't know. I just feel so weird today. I think even though it's been four years, I feel, I don't know what she's thinking. I think I haven't really thought about her because there's a part of me that still doesn't want to disappoint her. She didn't believe in divorce and, and she knew what was going on. She was actually one of the people that knew everything, but we had a lot of conversations about it and I don't know if she would have approved what ended up happening. And I don't care enough about her approval to not live my life, obviously. And at the end of the day, I stand firm by all the decisions I made. I have no regrets. I tried everything. I truly have no regrets about anything. But I don't know. I think when someone that you really care about or someone that is such a big part of your formative life has such a strong opinion about something, it's hard to have those conversations when you know that they might not agree with you. So I think there's a part of me that even though she's not here anymore, it just makes me like wonder what she would have said. And yeah. I don't know. Some people have told me that they think she would have been happy for me and that like I don't need to worry about what she would have thought and I hope they're right you know. I hope that she would have been happy for me because my current life is so incredible and it's so grace given. Is that a word? I really feel like it was sovereign and there are just so many things about my life that I'm so blessed by. Like I'm not blessed by myself like I'm not blessing myself but I just feel so blessed by God's goodness to me and I just feel like it's it's a very clear conscience life but yeah I met her when I was young and impressionable and there is a part of me that kind of resorts back to this like younger version that wants her approval and um, I did really struggle with doing things for people's approval which is something that I feel like I've grown so much out of I obviously still care about people's approval, but not nearly as much as I did before. And so, I don't know, maybe I'm like resorting back to that. But anyways, I know she's like dancing in heaven with God and she's celebrating and she's definitely not even thinking about me, but it's just weird because um, I talked to her about things so much. For over a year, we talked on the phone every day. We prayed together every day. She was truly my prayer warrior alongside me when I was going through a really hard time. But she also told it to me straight, like anytime she disagreed or she thought something very strongly, she told me very straight up. And you know, that was fine. But because of that, I know a lot of things that she thinks about certain things. And I just don't know what she would say if she was here and I presented her with my life, my current life, you know. I haven't thought about her in quite some time, but today is, today's weird. It's, I don't know. I'm not apologetic for my beautiful life. 
my life is amazing. I reconnected with Daniel very unexpectedly after I moved back home and we got married the next year. We had a honeymoon baby and then we had another baby. So now our life is full of laughs and watching our kids grow and love for one another. He is an incredible husband. I can say that even after having a fight last night. We had an argument last night and I didn't want to look at the time because I was like, oh my gosh, it's so freaking late. But it was probably like three in the morning. Even after having an argument last night, I can say with the utmost confidence and with all of my heart that he is an amazing husband. And after my previous marriage, I could fight with Daniel all day and it would be nothing because even in our arguments, he still loves me and I know that. So I'm not apologetic of my life. I just, I don't know. I just, um, I, you know what it is? I think I never got closure. That's what it is. I never got to tell her what happened. I think even if she was disapproving or she had an opinion about us getting divorced or me getting remarried or something like that. I think if she told me that, if she was alive and she told me, at least there was closure. Like at least I know like what she thinks and we can talk about it and it's fine. Yeah, I think that's what it is. I'm not, I don't need her approval necessarily, but I think the unknown is just kind of making me feel a little like, I don't know, you know? I don't even know what the main point of this video is. I think I started talking because today's February 29th and I was processing how I felt about her passing away. And then it made me think about my birthday, which always happens. That is something that I have thought about each year. And then also reflecting on my amazing life and how grateful I am that God gave me this beautiful life. Like I don't deserve it. I don't know why he was so kind to me to give me this life, but I'm so grateful. I think the last thing I want to say is that if you're going through a really hard time and you feel like it's hopeless, because I've been there, I, I truly felt like my life was over and everything was hopeless and there was nothing exciting to look forward to until I got to a certain point that I decided I was going to create a good life for myself. Um, before I reconnected with Daniel, I was planning to move away with my friend Caitlin and we were going to basically travel the world and do whatever we wanted. We were going to live in Philly. We liked Philly a lot. I still like Philly a lot. And we were going to like wait out COVID. I mean, at the time we had no idea how long it would last, but yeah, we, we often talk about how if I didn't get remarried and had kids, we would probably be living in Europe right now. So I, you know, I, at a certain point I decided I'm not going to let my life be over, but Anyways, I digress. If you're going through a really hard time and it feels hopeless, I just want to encourage you that it will probably get better. I'm sorry. I don't want to say that it will because like, I don't know that, but it probably will. And I think a lot of it will have to be just on the choices that you make and what you'll decide to do with the rest of your life. If you're a believer, I truly believe that God has a plan for you. Um, well, even if you're not a believer, I feel like God has a plan for you. But if you're a believer, I think you can find hope in that, that God has a plan for you and I don't have no idea what that is. Like I could not even imagine beyond my wildest dreams that this would be my life right now. I think literally every day there at least one time a day I will look at Daniel and be like, isn't it so crazy that we're married? Like it's just so crazy to me that this is my life even now. And so I don't know what his plan for you is and I'm not saying that it's going to work out exactly like mine or it's going to be something that you have asked God for or that you would want or what you think you want. But his plans are greater than ours. We have no idea what he has in store, what he's brewing up, what he's working behind the scenes, even with other people or just like, literally, we have no idea what he's doing. So I just want to give you hope that when I say it's going to be okay, well, I, I say it's probably going to be okay for the tangible things like the like what your life will literally look like, but I know it's going to be okay if you just believe that. God has a plan for you. And I don't, I'm not saying that it, again, it's not okay in the way you might think it's okay. I think for me, as an example, like for me, that would be if I, if someone told me it's going to be okay, I might've thought, oh, that means my first marriage is going to work out and it's going to be fine. Like, that's what I'm saying that it might not be. Like, it's not going to be what you think it's going to be or that you might want it to be, but whatever it is, whatever ends up happening, it's going to be okay. And it's probably going to be even better than you thought. I think that I can confidently say this, even though I know that I'm so lucky that this is my life. I think if I didn't marry Daniel and I was frolicking Europe with Caitlin, I think that would have been lovely too. And, and I don't know what would have happened in that life. 
maybe I would have met someone else. Maybe I wouldn't have. Maybe I would have come across a really cool opportunity to meet other types of people. Or maybe I would have ended up in a freaking cottage in the middle of nowhere in Cornwall. Like, I don't know, you know, but I think it would have been fine because when I decided that my life wasn't going to be over, I really... I really knew that whatever ended up happening, that it would be okay. And that's how I got through my really hard time. Among other things, there were obviously many things that I did or many things that helped me, but okay. I feel like I'm repeating myself because I don't want to be misunderstood about what I'm saying, but hopefully that made sense. And yeah, thanks for listening. There was a lot in the city. I don't even, I don't even know what I said really. We'll see what the final video looks like. This channel is weird. It's mostly food, but I'm going to talk about this stuff because it's important to me and it's important to me that other people who are going through really hard times, especially in a marriage, know that they're not alone. I felt really alone and there just wasn't a lot of stuff about this. So, okay, I'm going to go eat breakfast now. Bye.